A desperate congressman employs the help of a woman suffering a brain injury to launch a military moon base. Alice Eckel glides around the parking lot to serve the customer's food straight to their car, impressing everyone. Her parents Helen and Bob visit her as they excitedly notify her that her boyfriend went to get their blessing. Just in time, Officer Scott arrives, strutting his way to a dazed Alice. Her co-worker Brenda admires the man, calling him a dreamboat. The egoistic officer then invites Alice on a date at the fanciest restaurant in town, surprising the woman. At the restaurant, Scott brags about how the place only accommodates customers in high-standing professions. He then makes a speech about how they met, but gets interrupted by a repairman installing a sign above them. Disturbing his romantic moment, Scott gets angry while Alice tries to move to another table. However, the officer insists that this is the best table, so he tries to continue his proposal. As Alice says yes, the handyman falls from the ladder above them and accidentally fires a nail into the woman's head. In a panic, Scott drives the still-conscious Alice to the hospital. The doctor immediately finds the nail deeply embedded in her skull, deeming her situation critical. As they're about to operate, a medical representative stops them because Alice has no insurance. With that, the doctors begin snacking as they explain that their services aren't free, and Alice's case isn't urgent since she's not bleeding. Shocked, Alice asks for the cost of her operation just to be stunned by the price. As they transfer her out, the woman tries bargaining with her condition. The physician nonchalantly describes that the position of the nail in her head might affect her speech and make her drool uncontrollably. Hearing this, Scott becomes reluctant about his future wife. Another doctor then hints that her injury might make Alice aggressive in bed, giving Scott an idea. However, they also discuss her possibly going into an uncontrollable rage. Realizing the risks of their engagement, Scott slowly removes her ring, making the woman ask if they're still engaged. The man avoids the topic just as her parents arrive. Alice asks for their help, but her mother reminds her that they once offered her medical insurance versus a credit card, and the woman picked the latter. Learning that Scott is putting their engagement on hold, her parents suggest fundraising to solve her financial problem. At the fundraising event, Alice finds strangers chatting about her condition. Her aunt Rita assesses her head, insisting that she has the right since she's a doctor, but Alice corrects that she is a veterinarian. Helen then introduces Reverend Norm, who welcomes her possible return to the church. The local pastor suffers from an experimental medicine's effect, which causes an awkward condition that freaks Alice and Scott out. Soon, the couple starts the program. However, the microphone causes ear-piercing feedback, making almost everyone leave the event. Ultimately, they only gather $600. This discourages Alice, especially since her boss fired her due to her uncontrollable anger. Desperate, Alice allows Rita to operate on her for free despite Scott's reluctance. Anxiety peaks as Rita performs the procedure in the living room, treating her niece like the cow she often operates on. The older woman locates the nail and starts pulling it, only to lose grip. Her action ends up shifting the nail into an area containing Alice's emotions, filling the woman with anger, which scares Scott and the others. Unable to handle things, the man breaks up with Alice, leaving the woman in tears. Three weeks later, Norm and Keyshawn visit Alice to see that her condition has worsened. The men suggest taking her outside for relaxation, but Helen tells them they tried, and Alice's unpredictable anger caused panic and destruction. Empathetic to her situation, Keyshawn shares how he joined a weightlifting program. However, due to carrying weight beyond his capabilities, he developed an awkward injury and had no medical coverage to operate on it. Not wanting to aggravate her daughter, Helen switches the TV to a soothing program. They find a campaign ad for junior congressman Howard Birdwell. He invites the people to bring their issues to him as he will try to turn their problems into ideas. This inspires Alice to go to Washington to ask for the congressman's help. Helen disagrees, but Scott suddenly arrives. They think the officer is back for his ex, but he only asks for his sander belt. Overhearing her plan, he also discourages her. In contrast, the reverend suggests that traveling can be the spiritual journey that Alice needs. With that, she soon travels to Washington with Norm and Keyshawn. They arrive at the Congress State House, but the guards restrain Alice after seeing a large nail gun in her bag. She pulls the trigger on a guard, Rakisha, to reveal that it isn't loaded, which worsens the situation. Alice explains that she brought the nail gun to show the congressman what happened to her, while Keyshawn soothes Rakisha by asking the woman for a date. The other two press on to Howard's office, but learn that booking an appointment can take weeks. Alice then notices the door to the office ajar and peeks in, eavesdropping on the congressman's call with his mother, where he admits his disinterest in dating. Howard's secretary notices Alice and pushes her out. Just then, House Leader Pam Hendrickson arrives and speaks to Howard privately. 
Immediately, the junior panics while the woman pushes him to help her get her military moon base project approved. She orders him to find a representative for her cause who they can manipulate to endorse their moon base within a week. Suddenly, Congressman Bill announces that he got the girls' cause support by promising them a Shakira concert, which delights the housewhip. With that, Pam urges Howard to step up as she can replace him anytime. After being chased out, Alice plots to barge into another office to plead their case to any government official. However, Norm starts feeling sick due to his condition, so Alice advises him to rest at the motel. Determined, the woman barges into a random office alone, only to be shut out. As her anger starts flaring, Alice luckily comes across Howard and greets him immediately. She immediately tells him about the medical care problem people face without any solution due to a lack of financial capability. However, the congressman claims that he can't help her since he's tied up with his higher-ups projects and orders. The man rants about his constricting job, unaware that Alice's head gets hit by a worker carrying a statue. This moves the nail to trigger her lack of inhibition, so the woman kisses the congressman, startling him. The woman and a very willing Howard hide in the cloakroom and conduct an uncontrollable passion. After their vigorous activity, Alice explains that her actions were caused by the nail in her head. With his ego wounded, Howard denies her excuse, claiming it's because of his charms. The man tries to leave, but Alice reminds him of his promise to turn problems into ideas. This actually gives Howard an idea. He realizes that her condition will catch people's attention, so he invites her to promote the military moon base during an event. If she does, he promises to help with her medical condition, so the woman agrees. Later, Alice tells Norm about her agreement with Howard, impressing the Reverend on how she got the official sympathy with one conversation. Hearing this, the woman becomes nervous, remembering her outrageous actions in the cloakroom. Suddenly, Keyshawn returns from his date with Rakisha. He smugly shows off his new girlfriend's painting, portraying him as the leader of a wolf pack. However, he clarifies that he didn't mention his condition to her. Instead, he told Rakisha that he was there only to support them, which impressed the woman. With that, he asks his friends not to tell her the truth. Later, the group attends the conference where Alice has to speak to the public. This makes the woman nervous since she didn't prepare a speech, so Howard instructs her to plead that the moon base will help her with her injury. When she doesn't see the connection, Howard implies that the base will protect the citizens. He adds that they'll also talk to the leaders about including an emergency healthcare law in their bill. He then introduces them to Pam, whom Alice admires since the woman was an astronaut before entering politics. When Bill presents a girl squad to give a speech for the moon base, Howard proudly declares that Alice will give one too. Uninterested, Bill ushers the girl squad for their interview, where they promote going on a hike on the moon base. Next, Alice gets in front of the cameras and begins her speech. However, she deviates from the topic and starts praising Howard's efforts to help them. The man gets nervous, but Alice smoothly transitions this into the idea of turning the moon base into a new American state, which will improve their healthcare. After her speech, Howard and Alice's group celebrate in their motel. During this, Howard receives a message that the moon base bill received a big Paul bounce, so their house speaker wants to meet Alice tomorrow. Later, Alice and Howard discuss their lives' ongoing trials. The man has always dreamed of being a forest ranger, but no one understood why, so he went to law school to not disappoint his loved ones. He weeps at this thought, so Alice shares her broken engagement, sobbing. The two comfort each other, and Howard starts to think that Alice brought him the courage he needed to take chances. Touched, the woman admires his passion, leading them to be drawn to each other. Alice clarifies that she's actually attracted to him this time and isn't about to kiss him because of her brain injury. With that, the two make love. In the morning, Alice is excited to meet the house speaker and start including the emergency healthcare project in the bill. This reminds Howard of his empty promise that he doubts he can fulfill. Soon, house speaker Buck McCoy takes credit for the moon base bill, which angers Pam. After their promotion pictorial, Alice asks about the emergency healthcare bill, but McCoy accidentally reveals it as a false promise, leaving the promoters dismayed. Suddenly, the house speaker chokes on a girl squaw cookie. Using the tension, Howard implies that Pam's Shakira promise was also false, alarming the girl squaws. This puts Pam in the spot, more so when the kids walk out in tears. McCoy starts struggling to breathe, so Norm does the Heimlich maneuver, which becomes extremely awkward. When this doesn't work, Alice uses a defibrillator to revive the man, unaware that Pam had unplugged the machine to prevent her hard-earned project from falling into someone else's hands. Ultimately, the old man ends up in his passing, much to the former astronaut's pleasure. As she attends the house speaker's funeral, Scott sees Alice on TV. With him is Brenda, but now that his ex-fiancée is gaining popularity, the officer's interest diverts back to her. 
At the funeral, Pam practices her eulogy when her assistant, Edwin, reveals that he saw her unplug the defibrillator, which she dismisses. Howard joins Alice by the pews, but the woman is still fuming that he lied to her. He admits his fault, but asserts that Alice inspired him to do better. He offers to let her use his one major surgery voucher from Congress, but she refuses since she wants her friends and all other struggling patients to be helped too. With this in mind, Alice stands up and addresses the mourners. She asserts that McCoy was a hero and embraces his grieving wife. Upstaging Pam, Alice takes the podium and claims that McCoy took time to see her due to her brain injury that could kill her at any time. When he died in her arms, he told her that Americans should be given affordable healthcare instead of a moon base. Alice lies that the house speaker wanted the emergency healthcare law passed instead of the moon base bill. Touched, McCoy's widow declares that this is true since her husband was a caring man. With that, the mourners give Alice a standing ovation, much to Pam's annoyance. After her speech, the reporters bombarded the woman with questions as she desperately tried to catch Howard. However, Pam has the young congressman chased away, seeing that he cannot control Alice's group. Escaping the media, Alice finds Howard hiding in a room. The official praises her, and as the two complement each other's mischief, they realize they're falling for one another. This is interrupted when her friends arrive to applaud the woman's bravery. However, a girl squaw warns Alice that Pam wants to see her, which Howard thinks is the beginning of the woman's revenge. Frightened, Howard escapes out the window. Later, the girl squaws welcome Alice and her friends into their group, diverting their support to them since the Congress backed out on their promise. With that, they create the Alice cookies to raise support for the healthcare bill. They distribute the cookies and even make a viral video against the moon base. In retaliation, Pam fabricates a video to smear the girl squaw's reputation. This ruins their campaign's momentum, thus leaving Alice's group in trouble. Suddenly, Scott arrives, which surprises the woman. The man attempts to apologize while tempting her to return home and leave everything behind. Doubtful over her ex-fiancé, Alice hesitates, so the man discourages her from continuing her campaign, since it'll be dead in the pulse by tomorrow. This raises Alice's superstition since no one should know the pulse unless they're in Congress. She thinks Pam sent Scott to make her surrender, and a girl squaw confirms this since the officer was talking to the congresswoman earlier. With no choice, he admits that Pam put him up for it in exchange for a promotion. Still, he begs her to return with him, insisting that he really wants to get back together with her. Scott promises to support her cause, so she shares that she needs a sponsor to introduce her law to Congress. With that, Alice asks him to find Howard, which her ex promises to. The officer tracks down Howard and eventually finds him at a men's spiritual workshop retreat. He tells him to return to Alice, but the congressman insists on finishing his ritual to find his spiritual core. Because of this, Scott stays to watch him helplessly fight another warrior. Seeing that Howard isn't a good fighter, the officer encourages him to take the trophy without permission, like a real man. With that, he takes the trophy and escapes. Soon, Scott and Howard arrive at the girl squaw camp with more confidence to pass the bill. The congressman proudly declares that he'll resign from his party and become independent, despite it likely ruining his career. However, this will allow him to introduce Alice's bill. The man then kisses her, much to Scott's confusion. The officer punches him, declaring that Alice is his. The woman defends the man, leading Scott to discover that Alice manipulated him. She apologizes, but Scott decides to wait for Alice, sure that Howard will fail to be the man for her. The next day, Alice and her group are prepared to introduce their bill to the Congress. However, Pam has taken the role as the acting House Speaker, further complicating their position. With his newfound confidence, Howard raises the new basic catastrophic care bill, which garners much support. However, Bill arrives, handing out an affidavit from female lobbyists claiming that Howard promised to support their causes in exchange for physical satisfaction. The man defends that he only supported their cause to appease his superiors and get them to approve budgeting for his school programs, but the people are doubtful. Seeing the situation, Alice tries to make an appeal, seeking Congress's sympathy on how a small accident can ruin lives. Amidst her speech, her injury causes her pain, making her collapse momentarily. Still, her perseverance gains her applause. Despite this, her bill doesn't gain many votes, leading to Alice fainting. As her friends take her away, Howard leaves. Amidst the emotional speeches, Rakisha discovers Keyshawn's condition. Betrayed, she breaks up with him, leaving the trio back to where they started. Making matters worse, they find Howard shaking hands with Edwin, leading them to believe that he's siding with Pam again. Howard then confesses his crime to Congress, dropping his support for the healthcare bill. He instead suggests turning the Congressional Gym into the McCoy Memorial Gymnasium to honor their late House Speaker. With broken hearts, Alice and her friends pack up for home. 
To their surprise, they learned from a news report that the McCoy Memorial Gymnasium renovation bill was passed but contained a version of the emergency care bill. The reporter questions how Pam and the rest of Congress didn't notice this, to which she defends that her assistant is usually the one who reads her paperwork. Unbeknownst to her, Edwin happily passes by, since he intentionally didn't mention the added bill to her as his agreement with Howard. The reporter then interviews Howard, who's happy despite being fired from Congress. He then adds his declaration of love to Alice on national TV. Realizing that he's just outside, Alice runs to him and kisses him in front of the cameras. Days after, Norm officiates the wedding of Rakisha and now a congressional candidate, Keyshawn. During the celebration, Alice tries to propose to Howard when a champagne cork accidentally hits her eye, surprising everyone with the accident-prone woman's luck. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.